go. All right, usually I would use two clean water cups to begin with, but we're kind of working with limited space right now. And on pulling up some reference, I pretty much always have reference going on at some point. And I am using a Strathmore Mixed Media Journal. It's the hardcover kind. I normally don't go, let me see if I can fix that camera a little bit better that comes from it. I want to just be able to, to work and not care if my work looks like garbage sometimes. So I'm used to spiral bound where, um, you know, when I need to put the page behind me, I didn't erase the pencils. This was inked with a Sailor Mitsuo Ida brush pen. Um, unfortunately, you can only get them through jet pens. So, um, you know, <laughs> You can't get them on like Amazon or Dick Blick. I'm not going to see them at Michael's. And I am erasing my pencils using a Tombow Mono Eraser. And it's one of the NP erasers, which means it doesn't have PVC in it. A uh, supposedly PVC thing, apparently. I, di I didn't know that. I used to use the PVC ones and I liked them a lot. But now they don't. If you're interested in gouache, but you're lazy like I am, they're an option. Um, they're not necessarily a great option. Unfortunately, they're going to end up a little bit off camera. They do take up a bit of space, of which I'm running out of. Some other tools I have on this desk. I have a palette, which I'm going to go ahead and put food aside. I have a cup of clean water. Uh, I recommend two cups if you have the room. I have a roll of paper towels. Um, you, where are you? You are not it. I don't see you, eyedroppers. Ah, ha, ha, found one. So, with watercolors, um, and this includes opaque watercolors, and I did not clean, I, I put some smudges on them the other night when I was painting something. And I didn't clean it off. And I will hopefully this will work. Wipe the blue off of the brown cake. I don't want too much cross contamination. And I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to paint this to completion. And um, by then it will be probably past nine. If it's not past nine. And between now and next time, hopefully it's next month, but if it's not, I understand, um, you guys will think about some things you'd like to see me draw. Um, part of the whole, the whole reason this is, um, the stream itself is private is because um, I want you guys to feel comfortable requesting things. So if you'd like me to like do a watercolor, do a watercolor of your cat, that's what this is for. You're totally welcome to request that. I, I want you to request that. I This is my chance to interact with you guys a little bit more. I mean, we do on Twitter. Um, and to be able to give something a little bit back for your generosity and your support. So please don't be shy. Please um, make requests. Think about it between now and then. Cause that would make that would make me happy. That's what I want from y'all. So I'm going to start, I think, by painting in the background. I'm just gonna do. It's not even a wash. Uh, I'm just gonna do a fill on the background with this. It looks like a phthalo blue because it's a pretty uh, green blue, and it should contrast really nicely with the red I'm gonna use on this guy. And um, for those of you who are watching this stream after it's been edited into parts, um, if you are interested in, you know, the whole request aspect of this, please consider becoming a backer of my Patreon. Um, $2 on your part unlocks access to all of, all of the community-wide tiers, and it helps me out a lot. I really appreciate it. So, um... Starting at $2, you would be eligible to make requests in the backer request live stream. You know, that's part of what it's for. 
And I do have rewards at higher tiers, including original art. Um, recently, my phenomenal, wonderful, super generous backers unlocked the mini comics tier. Um, with the caveat that this might, that might not last forever. I appreciate it while I got it. Thank you so much. Um, so if you're interested in taking a look at my backlog of mini comics, including stuff I made while I was at school, uh, SCAD, and including two of my sketchbooks, um, right now all of my Patreon backers have access to that for free. So for $2 a month, you could have access for that, to that for free as well. I'm going to end the show there. This is not intended to be a show. This is intended to thank my backers. So, um, almost done with this fill here. And this is not a true wash at all. Um, but one of the things about doing a fill is um, it can be harder to control your color. Um, sometimes it mixes darker in some areas and I actually want this to dry as flat as possible so I'm going to use a bulldog clip to clip my page down. This is pretty heavy paper but it's not so heavy that um, it's not going to, to move. And several companies make some excellent gold. Um, I've never used this gold before so I'm going to mix it nice and thick and it goes on kind of I was hoping it would be a little more opaque. Maybe I can do multiple layers of it. And unfortunately, we have the fun task of watching paint dry together, um, which is kind of what I figured would happen. And it's one of the reasons why um, I didn't, I didn't lead with, and I can do watercolor. So if that is something you're interested in, if you're already interested in markers, then um, let's just let's do markers first and then work into watercolor. I'd be capable of a whole lot of nuance, but that works in favor of this opaque watercolor, which tends, which is mixed heavier, for example, mixed, um, we want that opacity. And I do know the spots, since he's, um, they're Japanese bobtails, and those are sort of like calicos in that they are familiar with lucky cats or maneki nekos and are like, you did it wrong. Well, I know I did, but I like that red. Well, the blue is wet. It is cold to the touch, but it is soaked in. We don't have surface pooling going on right now. Um, but we're waiting on that red, which could take forever. And the problem is I have a large area to cover. I want to do cream as the shade color to the white. That would be on his, um, that would be the majority of his fur. And that's also holding me up from doing the tan and uh, black or dark brown. So we're at that impasse where we're watching paint dry together and I feel like I need to entertain y'all. But I, I used up all my material earlier in the evening so now it's just like drink Dr. Pepper and, and make quiet conversation time I guess. I could theoretically use the black as a color hold and it would keep the, because what you, when you're painting, um, as long as you have a certain amount of dry paper in between two colors, they're not going to bleed. Um, you're going to get a lot of feathering and bleeding that you, you just weren't prepared for. While you can watercolor on it or you can gouache on it like we're doing here tonight, um, that's not really, it's not going to handle the addition of water-based media as well as watercolor paper. Um, and that's not a slam on the product. I enjoy the product. That's just something you need to keep in mind if you're thinking about mix, doing mixed water, ugh, doing mixed media on mixed media paper, heavily reliant on watercolors. Sorry, that was me trying to get that out. Um, 
you need to be aware of some of the limitations so you can make accommodations if you need to. And I'm still waiting on that red, which is pulled. I'm going to try to adjust my mixed media paper. Because it is, it is warping a little bit. And um, ideally, I guess I could still put bulldog clips. And kind of, I should have stretched it from the beginning. I should have clipped it to start, and then it wouldn't be doing this do is what I'm doing, tilting the paper to get the water to move. And that will create a uneven, um, that will create like different, different degrees of saturation depending on where, like if your water goes over, if your pigmented water goes over an area that is already dried with color on it, it will add another layer on it. So that layer may appear darker. Um, and that's, that's fine with me. I'm just telling you this because a lot of people like opaque watercolors because you're able to get these sort of very flat fields. So it's good for like, like, like this illustration, for example. This is where if you have the space, a two brush approach is great because you can um, have a cup of just clean water. That's perfect for blending. I'm sort of rolling the dice here by applying possibly water to my opaque watercolor pans. Oh, see, and I got a little bit of bleeding, even though there was a buffer of paper in between, just like we discussed. So what you can do about that is by dabbing it up. with a piece of clean paper towel. And this is textured paper towel. I highly recommend this paper towel is, is great for this application. Um, I love it for watercolor. I just happen to be out and I have some regular kitchen paper towels handy. So, you know, use what you have. So I need to allow that bib area to fully dry before I can go back and fix the cream. And that means all that side of the body, I have to sort of uh, postpone or work very carefully because it will want to bleed. And um, because this is opaque watercolor, it means it is adding a layer of opacity over the black line art. Um, I, there's a few ways you can handle that, including just being careful around the black line art, um, or you can go over it again with ink and tighten it up, which is a solution a lot of artists would go for. So um, something that comes up a lot as an artist who does conventions and I sell watercolors at conventions and I have a watercolor comic is a lot of people tell me, um, you know, I would love to watercolor, but every time I watercolor, it looks, it looks terrible. And, um, most of them when pressed will admit that the problem is they're impatient. They want to, uh, they, they work too quickly. Um, and they don't know how to fix things. And what I end up confessing to them is I, I usually work on multiple things at one time because I am not a patient woman and, uh, patience is painful for me. Waiting is wasting for someone like me. Um, and so I, ha I have to, knowing I'm that kind of a person, I have to work on multiples at a time. So this is I'm very hard to uh, not make you guys just watch paint dry, but also um, not overwork it to the point where it's bleeding into itself because I was too impatient. Something else I can do, because this is never going to be gold enough, I don't think, is I could have, and I still can, I'm pretty sure, I can apply this sort of yellow ochre color um, and then paint the gold on top of that as a base. Oh, shoot. Come on, you. 
fortunately, it was wet and um, wet into wet can pick up very easily. And then after this fully dries, I can go over it with another layer of gold. As you guys can see, this already works, in my opinion at least, it already works way better as a gold than the gold, um, metallic gold. And that's why I'm kind of just unimpressed with metallic gold as, as a product. I've, I've tried using it. I see other people use it to great effect, but it, it just, it, we don't always get along so well. And um, it's because it's just not opaque enough to really read as gold it reads as, you know, like gold flakes. Another reason I'm not super hot on it is most of my work is intended for reproduction. So um, that metallic gold, while it looks great on the original and it's good for commissions if they want that, it doesn't actually look, it doesn't make the object look like actual gold because it just, to make something look like actual gold, like, like a golden coin or a golden sword, you're going to have to render it in a specific way, um, and you can't just use a metallic gold to make it look that. You can use a metallic gold in addition to those techniques, and it'll look really nice, but it's not, it's not the key solution. So I'm going to go back into that area and probably make it bleed, but hopefully, hopefully not. And I kind of want to do pink cheeks, but none of these pinks are very good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix some water. Again, this is when having really clean water would be a huge bonus. And mix some along with some of that red I really like. And... Yeah, just a little bit because the red is already a very powerful color, so it's going to kind of overwhelm. It's pretty awful white wash. Some blush circles. And after this dries, if I decide it's not intense enough, I can always reapply after mixing in a little bit more. So now we're pretty much waiting on that yellow ochre coin and the bib so we can do the green. Um, and usually with Lucky Cats, um, the red would be a collar with like a little bell or a little gold coin, and then this would be more like a bib, rather than like the front of the cat. But I have drawn so many of these cats over the years. And let that dry too. So we've got a bunch of things <laughs> drying now before we can move on. We've got that red that just will not dry, and then the gold coin. And um, as you saturate your paper, it is going to take longer and longer to dry. So if I were doing this, um, I'd probably step away for an hour, let the paper dry out. That would reduce my dry times again. Um, Unfortunately, I really don't want to do that to you guys. I don't want to make you wait an hour for us to have this finished. Although, in general, I would tell you guys, um, for your own work, it takes the time it takes, so don't... That's not fair to you, and it's not fair to the materials you're working with. So... This... I'm going to take a few minutes to dry, and um, I could, I could theoretically, um, and this is our first stream, so I kind of want to run it by you as things that we could do in the future. I'm not going to do this. Theoretically, if this were just inks, for example, I could move this to the side and work on something else. But this takes up a lot of the table, and um, I may end up doing more damage moving things and spelling things than just leaving things and, and nattering on it, you guys, trying to entertain you. Um, 
for me to think of things to talk about while I watch paint dry. Um, for opaque watercolors, so okay, I have to admit I am not much of a gouache user. I don't really care for gouache. I've never become proficient in gouache. Um, I like when other people use gouache. I think they do a beautiful job of it. So it's not like it's not like the medium is just worthless to me and I can't stand it. I, I do enjoy the medium. Um, but I like working with transparent things. I like working in transparent la layers. So alcohol markers, water-based markers, watercolors, those... I can understand them a little bit better for whatever reason. Um, I was never good at acrylic. I sure gave it a shot. I even took a class on it. It just it doesn't click for me personally. Um, but I've noticed that people who are good with acrylic often can pick up gouache. I think because there are similarities in the media in terms of dry times and how it handles and how you fix things that are different from watercolor um, but are similar to each other. So it may, if you are an acrylic artist, you may be able to do gouache very easily. Um, this set is definitely a combination of watercolor and gouache. And working on a larger, more graphic, over render the moss and it ends up muddy and it just didn't work that well. Whereas something very simple and very graphic with limited color is working a lot better for me because there's a there's less less room for error less places for failure um but also oh shoot because i'm not expecting it to do now i have a good idea of what i expect of it and um i had also done swatches of these gouache of these pans earlier and i've worked i've ever really become with it i don't give it enough of a chance um I'm just not willing to sink the time into learning, to be frank, I'm just not willing to sink the time into learning a whole new medium at this time. But of the ones I've tested, I think this might, these might be my favorite. I use the Pelican um, opaque uh, watercolors about a year ago. And I was also, I think I was also trying to render a, a subject matter that was just too complicated for my skill set and for the abilities of those watercolors. And that's uh, def definitely one of the things that came to me with time and practice is learning what I can fix, what I can fix with white gouache or Copic Opaque White later when everything's dry. Mistakes. Um, some of which I've made on camera, so... <laughs> I'm sure you've seen me make plenty of mistakes, and some of which I shared on the blog. But I think making mistakes is very healthy, um, and I think you can't really grow as an artist or develop skill as an artist if you don't make mistakes. So um, I do personally believe YouTubers who only share stuff they're super comfortable with, they never, they never make mistakes with it, um, they can do it in their sleep. I think they're doing themselves and their audience a disservice unless they're doing it as a tutorial. And I also think the creators who only share stuff that half asleep marmoset could do it. I like I also think if that's all they ever do, they're doing themselves and they're doing their audience a disservice because it creates this this belief that everything you should you do should come out perfect every single time. And that's unfair to young artists who are just getting started. It's unfair to, to older artists who are just getting started. And it's unfair to yourself because you're cheating yourself. And that isn't something anybody can live up to. Yep, still waiting on the old paint to dry. But anyway, that's, that's one of the reasons why I am very willing to share um, all my failures with you guys. It's not that I don't feel embarrassment. But I'm sure, since I, I know you guys, most of you guys from my Twitter or from conventions, I know you guys know that. Um, I know you know I feel embarrassed when I'm a human. Um, and I don't, I don't like, particularly enjoy uh, making a fool of myself either. But I just really feel passionately that, it need, that we need to, as denizens of the internet, we need to get rid of this notion that th things need to be... First of all, things, everything has to be easy. That's one of the things I hear a lot. 
is um, from younger people when I table at cons, that's one of the other things they can pass is, oh, but it's hard. I screw up a lot. Well, yeah, I mean, that's like anything we're doing. You're going to screw up a lot. Very few people do things perfectly the first go round. I mean, things that are worth having require often require sacrifice. So we need to, to, to we need to make it okay for things to take the time they take, and we need to make it okay for things for you to take a while to learn. You know, like not all eggs hatch at the same rate. Not everybody is ready for prime time at the same time. And I think as art pressure from exterior places that we have to make it work um, immediately. Like, how, how many of you guys, just, just be honest, how many of you guys have parents who, like, if you, if you didn't figure out, like, if you weren't serious about going into art by your sophomore year of college, they were about ready for you to go into anything else? Or maybe, maybe not. Maybe you guys were, were fortunate and had parents who, like, kind of understood how long this stuff takes. Trying to vary some of his spots, his or her spots in size. I goof by putting two on the head. See, talking about mistakes, I made a mistake right there, right there, live. I mean, nobody else would see it that way. Kind of quit putting spots on a cat. At least those kind of spots. Got to do the next type of spot. While I wait on paint to dry. And some of the pink is not ready for me to paint the claws on yet. So I'm going to try to work around it. Wet areas of color, which is one of the reasons why people um, used gouache in like an animation sense. Uh, these have the so they have the properties of both gouache and watercolor. And one of the watercolor properties they have is um, they don't always dry to a uniform color. So you will get discrepancies in tone. Um, and if you do want that flat color, it's you might have a really hard time getting them that with these. All right, let's go back with that. See, it, the gold works. I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but the gold works so much better on top of that yellow ochre, which is already kind of a golden color. And I can start in on the darker spots. I'm going to grab a smaller brush. See, I'm glad I activated these hands ahead of time because now putting them like 10 minutes maybe tops probably start before that but 10 minutes should be good to get them activated you would need multiple layers and it may reactivate the layer below which is going to cause possibly a muddy so these might be for like the water Color artist who wants to play with gouache but doesn't want to buy gouache and doesn't want to learn how to use gouache. So me, maybe. If I ever get better at it. Oh my goodness. So on that bib, the red bib where it just not dry. Oh, I forgot I was on camera. Sorry. You should stretch regularly though. Otherwise, you're going to end up wizened. Like me, all bent over. Aw, thank you, Joseph Coco. I see plenty of cats in, in regular life, so I've, I've seen the good and the bad. Maybe I should draw the bad side of one of these cute little guys next time, huh? Steal a page out of my friend Casey's book. And I do want to fill in the coin with some black. Um, 
Man, if I was feeling brave, I would actually try to, to replicate the writing. I guess I could. Hmm, maybe not. I was thinking about darkening the blue underneath him, but that might be too too much work. No, when I say too much work, I don't mean, oh, I'm lazy, too much work. My poor editor is going to have to edit out all of those swigs. Oh, so, so close. Oh, I don't know why I'm looking up there. Keep looking here. We're so close, so close to this little guy being painted. Definitely does not make me want to do like a full-fledged watercolor painting on camera. <laughs> with that, with that. I'll do it if you ask because I love you guys, but I might limit it to, I might like, for when I do it voluntarily, I might limit it to like certain techniques that I want to show. I feel like I should be like doing the it. I wonder if this entire mixed media sketchbook is going to end up. I'm sorry, I'm like weirdly checking to see um, how dry the paper is so I can know when I can fill in that, the black on the coin. We're like, we're like, other than dry time, but I, I'm not going to make you guys watch that. That would make me sad to watch that. Get sandbagging here. And then I could say, but I'm not, but like really, you guys are, I, I, you don't have any reason to believe that. So one of the things I've found frustrating with gouache, and to a lesser extent, opaque watercolor, is that, well, there's two things really. One, uh, when you put a new layer on top, it re can reactivate the layer below. Which is, I mean, that happens with watercolor too, so I'm not surprised. Two, though, and this is another thing that happens with watercolor, but um, because it's transparent, it can be less of a problem, is that with wash, if you add a new layer, it can um, basically the previous layers of gouache you put down can act like ground, and that ground can absorb the color and basically make it feather out a whole lot, which sort of ruins the whole like very clean line aesthetic that tends to be what a lot of people do use gouache for. I've seen some very lovely painterly things done with gouache as well. Um, that's just so far beyond my ability. Maybe one day, but today is not that one day. Okay, so it is, <laughs> it is 9.30. I am pretty much done with this little guy, other than drawing him being dry. Um, I could neaten up the line work, but I'd have to wait for it to be fully dry anyway, and that's going to take at least, I would, I would allow the watercolors to dry for a full day before I tried to ink over it. So I am going to call it a night. I'd like to thank those of you who stopped by and uh, watched the stream, hung out with me. Thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate your support. For those of you who couldn't make it, as I said before, this is going to be edited and um, reposted as individual videos on YouTube. Um, although I did talk during them, so that makes things kind of sticky. Uh, maybe we'll just edit it. That's fine. Anyway, um, if you liked what you saw and you would love like to become involved and you've got some specific questions you'd like to see them in the uh, backer request live streams, please check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash natosoup for more information on the natosoup community. Um, I'm Becca Hilburn, founder of natosoup studio. I'm pretty much natosoup studio. And some people even call me natosoup rather than Becca, which is kind of weird, to be honest. I prefer Becca. Uh, but that's who I am. I hope you guys have a great day. Um, I'll see you hopefully next month. Bye.